What was that? It was what? It was, I heard something. I heard someone come in. Turn, turn the camera over there. No, I'm, like no one is here. I'm the only person here. Relax. Wait, why are you lying to me? Turn the camera. I'm not fucking lying. I'm not turning the camera. Um, yeah, you are. I'm paying you right now. Don't forget the meter's fucking running. Turn the camera. Hi everyone, I'm Dom Griffin. I'm a film critic and you're watching The Armchair Auteur. This is an ongoing video series I do where we talk about new movies, old movies, screenplay analysis, that sort of thing. So if you like movies and film culture and you like to see people pick those things apart, please consider subscribing. Today I'm reviewing PVT Chat, the new film from writer-director Ben Hosey, starring Peter Vac and all of film Twitter's girlfriend, Julia Fox. As most of you know, ever since the Softie Brothers released their film Uncut Gems like a year and a half ago, Julia Fox, who stars in the film, has become sort Sort of like a big darling and crush of pretty much anyone who is a movie nerd or has eyes. So much so that a lot of people were having like really visceral online breakdowns when she announced the birth of her son and like posted those pictures on Instagram of her being pregnant. So you know she's like kind of a hot commodity to a lot of people ever since that film came out. Interestingly enough this film is also getting a lot of weird comparisons to the Safety Brothers because of the fact that it stars Fox and Buddy Duris who you may have seen in the Safety Brothers films Heaven Knows What and Good Time and it's set in New York City and it has a subplot about gambling and like it has a lot of things that I guess on a surface level are somewhat similar to Uncut Gems but it's otherwise not stylistically even close. The film follows Vac as Jack, a loner living alone in the apartment his roommate died in, eating ramen and paying his rent late with what could charitably be described as his main hustle, playing blackjack online. But as addicted as he appears to be to his non-traditional career, he's even more obsessed with the world of online camming, funneling the majority of his earnings into long sessions with digital dominatrixes. Jack's surface kinks are pretty standard stuff for 20-something subboys, wanting to be sublimated, having simulated cigarettes ashed in his mouth, but the S&M is just a feint. His real goal is to use tokens to get more honest intimacy from the models he interacts with. Of the models this begins to work with, it's Scarlet, played by Fox, who seems to be the most susceptible. Not because she's gullible, but because the enhanced version of Jack he presents to her, that of an app developer passionate about a futuristic social media platform he's working on, happens to tick the right boxes for what she's missing in her own life. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. The film's brisk runtime is split between showing us Jack and Scarlet's weird burgeoning relationship from Jack's perspective, and it's presented in an unvarnished way that doesn't explicitly highlight how unhealthy it is, allowing the viewer to forget, for brief moments, how obsessive and strange this connection truly is. But once he accidentally runs into Scarlet at a bodega after she insists she lives in San Francisco, it becomes kind of a ticking time bomb of when his obsession is going to turn him full on stalker. But before the film can follow through on that Chekhov's gun and fly off the rails, it flips the script and shows us things from Scarlett's perspective, filling in the personal details of her life outside of the camming job in a way that's both surprising and absolutely tragic. I was at once grateful for this shift, because Fox is too talented to just be eye candy, but also somewhat troubled as the direction her arc, and truly the entire third act, feed into the kind of numbing incel fantasies a film like this could otherwise do well to combat. Without spoiling more of the film, I can say that Vac and Fox have great chemistry and both do some strong work, but the film's final 15 minutes or so are very clumsily executed, and although I vibe with the final scene and the implications of its conclusion, I think the messy way Hosey gets there undercuts any power the ending possesses. This is, above all else, a film about the transactional nature of modern interpersonal relationships, of all shapes and sizes, and kind of explores similar ideas to Steven Soderbergh's The Girlfriend Experience, but with, you know, much less of Soderbergh's discipline as a storyteller. Also, the Safdie comparisons are way off when visually the movie looks more like a film student's approximation of late Terrence Malick than anything else. Like, I still haven't seen any newer Malick past, like, the first 20 minutes of Trio Life, but I've seen the trailer for Night of Cups enough to know that this shit looks like Night of Cups, but cheaper. Whether or not you should see this film kind of depends on two things. One, if you want to see an experimental little indie flick exploring the seedy side of modern alienation and the ways living our lives inches away from a screen all day can exacerbate toxic habits we may already possess and can accept that this film, though ambitious, isn't quite the right vessel for such exploration, then give it a watch. Like, you might really dig it. But if you're just the kind of pervert who's here to ogle Julia Fox's dump truck ass, you should also see it. Because, like, look, she's objectively very hot in this film, okay? I'm not trying to be Mr. Skin here or something and tell you what movies show off boobs and which ones don't, but, like, if you're the kind of person who's just here to watch this film as sort of like a digital cinema thirst trap, then, yeah, like, it's gonna meet those needs because Julia Fox is hot and most of the movie is kind of based around her being hot. And to be fair, that strength is also sort of one of the reasons why discourse around 
this film is going to be populated by people who have difficulty taking it seriously because it is hard to focus on certain elements of the movie outside of that particular like male gaze lens. Like in some ways it's perfect casting, but it also seriously undercuts the film's efficacy. She's, she's just really good looking. I will not date you. I don't date outside my race, okay? I'm sorry, Dr. Umar. But I will say as good as Fox is in this role, I do hope this is like the last of her playing sort of these like basic, minorly subversive eye candy roles because she has the potential to be like a really fantastic actress. I think she's been very good in everything she's done so far. Like she's very good in this film. Vac is very good in this film. I've seen him in a couple of movies before, but really only recognized him in this. Like he looks kind of like a more sad, gaunt version of like Lucas Hedges. But like Fox is fantastic and I hope that the rest of her career is not just playing like hot people, like because she can do more than that. Uh, as I think Uncut Gems showed very well. So for reasons both artistic and unwarrantedly horny, you should probably see PPT Chat. I think it's worth watching, it's on Vito and Man, but like if me talking about this film or you watching the trailer eked you out or made you feel kind of gross or like made you think this seemed like a stupid fucking idea, do not watch it. Like it's not gonna surprise you or change your mind. Like it's gonna be kind of what you think it is. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, subscribe. Hit the little bell icon to get notifications when I put out new videos. And yeah, if you guys want to talk to me about it in the comments, I'm, I'm there for that always. I hope you guys are doing well, staying safe, being good to yourselves and each other, and wearing your masks. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.